With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be a part of this year's program, I'm delighted to have you. I actually want to start with a phone call. I don't want to keep Nancy waiting on this one. Uh, Nancy, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How will certain federal jobs be affected employment-wise? Uh, I don't think you will see a reduction in force at different federal agencies uh, just because they can't go overboard with the regulations. I, I'm Listen, it's, it's the feds. They're not going to lay people off if they can help it. Um, I don't think that there will be any sort of need for them to do it. they got plenty of stuff they can do. If anything, uh, they'll just have more time on their hands to actually do their job instead of passing regulations. Uh, they'll, they'll go with gusto towards enforcement power instead of regulatory power. But uh, the way it typically works, though, is that like the, the regulations come out of their legal off the law offices, and those law offices within the various departments that help them draft the regulations are still going to have plenty of work on their hands. So I don't think we'll see any sort of reduction in force there. Um, now, I got to move on to other things. I, and I want to talk about something I was going to talk about yesterday. But first, switching topics again, I've just I've gotten this email and I've gotten it like from three different people. Three different people are telling me the filibuster is unconstitutional. If, if I've been so happy about all the Supreme Court throwing all this stuff out, why am I not talking about the filibuster? You know the filibuster is constitutional. You may not like it, but it's constitutional. Just Can we play a little game of use your brain, people? If the filibuster were unconstitutional, why haven't Democrats in the House of Representatives or the Senate filed a lawsuit asking the Supreme Court to throw it out. What? Why Why has no one bothered to file a suit? Why has no one challenged it in federal court? If it's unconstitutional, why hasn't someone done that? Because it's constitutional, idiots. I'm sorry, I shouldn't call you idiots. Some of you just don't know. I just get this question so much from, particularly from progressives who who f- are flustered about the filibuster and say it's unconstitutional, but it's not. It is very constitutional. You don't believe me? Uh, Look up Article 1 of the Constitution. Article 1 of the Constitution clearly says the houses of Congress are allowed to make their own rules. Article 1, Section 5, Clause 2. Each house may determine the rules of its own proceedings. The filibuster is a rule governing parliamentary procedure in the Senate. That's it. And all it says is that you have to have a supermajority to cut off debate. And by the way, just so you understand, that's also the parliamentary procedure rule under Robert's Rules of Orders. Except under Robert's Rules of Orders, you got to have a two-thirds vote to call the question. In the Senate, you only need 60 votes to call the question. That's it. It's a totally legal, permissible, well-accepted, long-time rule that is perfectly constitutional. And if you don't think it's constitutional, the burden is on you to then answer the question, why has no one bothered to file a lawsuit in the courts even before there was a conservative supermajority on the Supreme Court to get rid of it? Why? No one's bothered because they know they would be wasting their time. The Constitution, Article 1, Section 5, Clause 2, says the houses of Congress get to set their rules. The Senate has made the filibuster a rule. Therefore, it is definitionally constitutional. The end. Okay, now that I have gotten that out of the way, I apologize for calling those of you who are ignorant idiots. You were just ignorant. That's all. I get it. Now we've gotten all that out of the way, and you're mad at me, and you're hurling your spittle at the radio, yelling at me. I want to talk about something. I should have talked about it yesterday, but there was too much other stuff to talk about. 
on this day in 2000, yesterday in 2007, long lines of people stood outside Apple stores around the United States waiting to purchase the iPhone. I still have the original iPhone. I do. My buddy Clayton and I, we went to, what is it, North Point Mall in Alpharetta near his house. And we got our iPhones. And I actually had to get a new cell phone number because the AT&T had a problem with my account. I was a pre-existing AT&T customer. And, and that's when I got my new phone number because there was a problem in the rollover. My wife wanted to know which of us dressed up as Chewbacca, which of us dressed up as Princess Leia. She was thought it was ridiculous. I actually like took the day off work to stand in line all day so that I could get my iPhone. I stood there. And it was a revolutionary groundbreaking device. What you may not remember is that every other cell phone manufacturer in the country laughed their butts off when Apple unveiled the iPhone. Um, they, they, they absolutely did not believe it was a serious device. They truly, genuinely thought that there was no way Apple could present a device like this and have it work because Apple was not a cell phone company. I mean, they they really and truly thought that it just flat out was a, a dumb device. In part, it was a dumb device because it didn't have buttons other than a home button. And now it doesn't even have that button. It's got a power on and off button and it's got volume buttons. And that's it. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. Notice the muted reaction there, like, what? A what? What is this? So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> On the stage, she showed one of the old-fashioned white original iPods, and it had a rotary dial on it instead of where the scroll wheel was. No. So, we're going to reinvent the phone. Now, we're going to start with a revolutionary user interface. Is the result of years of research and development. And, of course, it's an interplay of hardware and software. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And 
What's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how... That was the iPhone unveiling in January of that year, and then it actually came out on June 29th of that year. The world has never been the same since in millions of ways that are hard for people who grew up after the unveiling of the iPhone to realize. The physical buttons that phones had were gone. The keypads gone. I mean, everyone ridiculed Apple for this design, ridiculing it for lack of buttons. Uh, BlackBerry is out of business now. Palm, out of business now. Windows, Microsoft, uh, they don't make phones anymore. It revolutionized things. But with it came a lot of bad things. There's a book written called iGen. I encourage you to, to read the book called iGen. And the spike in teen and child suicides went up a year later. What happened a year later? They started allowing people to put software on phones and social media was installed on phones. And your kid could see that the other kids at school were having fun and parties without them. Cyberbullying could happen in ways it couldn't happen before. All sorts of things Apple has tried to contemplate in the future and, and things they could they could do, but uh, sexual predators could prey on kids in ways they never have before. Kids could fall into despair in ways they never have before. You could become an information addict, a game addict, a, a porn addict, uh, an addict of some kind. Uh, your phone is always with you. Kids physiologically have become more slumped over and hunched back because they stare down at their phones all the time now. It's become a problem for a sedentary lifestyle, people developing hunchbacks because they're they're stooped over all the time on their phones. Uh, as much good as the iPhone brought us, literally all of the information of the universe in the palm of your hand, all of the known knowledge in the universe is now accessible in the palm of your hand in ways never before. But information overload has come with that. Depression and despair have come with that. How much bad news do the news apps push out to your phone on a daily basis? It's come with that. It's fundamentally changed the way we communicate. How many of you now want a phone call as opposed to a text message? I mean, phone message, you might as well like kick in my door and have a bullhorn and say, I'm here! Send me a text. And I don't have read receipts, so you'll never know when I've read it, and I'll reply at my own convenience. As opposed to a phone call, are you an animal? I mean, next you're actually going to want to come over to my house and, and have a conversation with me as opposed to, I mean, calling me on the phone. FaceTime, you know, for a time, people used to think video calls would be, what an awesome future. That would be a video call. Now you've got it in the palm of your hand and nobody uses it because, my gosh, i got to brush my hair for you to actually have a conversation with me on the phone? Hell no revolutionized and radicalized our existence. It's done something else fundamentally, vehemently detrimental to American society, to society as a whole. As much as I, and look, y'all, I mean, I stood in line to get the iPhone. I have had every single model of iPhone. I buy one every, I am that guy. I buy a new iPhone every year. I'm like Rush. I buy friends and family new iPhones all the time. One day I'm going to have the money to buy listeners new iPhones. I, I just, I, I love Apple devices I, I've, since I was a kid. I got my hands on an Apple II when I was in first grade and I've never looked back. But the iPhone has done something fundamentally deleterious to American society, something no one saw coming. And we need to talk about that when we come back. There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing. 
And I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, more importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, you can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, you can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, they've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it. And I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC. Member Fin. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson. I, I want to talk about, I mentioned before break, the deleterious effect of the iPhone. It, it is the one bad thing about the iPhone. I see it with myself and with all of you. And you don't even have iPhones. You have inferior Android devices that generate green bubbles. It's like I'm texting poor people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't do group chats with green bubbles. Can't have poor people in the chats. <laughs> I'm only saying this because Charlie refuses to get an iPhone out of spite, which is why I don't text him. I send him handwritten letters in the mail, written in blood. But nonetheless, go to a restaurant. Watch a family sitting at a restaurant table. They all got out their phones. They're they're staring at their phones. They're not talking to each other. You know, I didn't want to get my six, now 16-year-old a phone when she was 13. I thought I would wait until 16 to get her a cell phone. But at 13, she got a cell phone. Now, we monitored it. We regulated her time on it and all that. But I had to get her one. I mean, I literally did have to get my child a phone. Why? Because I took her on a field trip. I had to, I, at, at their kid's school, like our old old school was rich. They'd hire charter a bus to take the kids on field trips. This one, the parents actually have to take the kids on the trip. And I volunteered because my wife was very anti-driving in Atlanta, still is. So I had four girls in my car, four girls, four 13-year-old girls in my car. And it was silent the entire way to Atlanta. Why? because they were texting back and forth. I wound up having to give my daughter my cell phone and the girls the number so they could add my phone to their group chat so that my daughter could participate because it wasn't just the four girls in my car, but it was the girls in the other four cars and it was a one big group chat and they were having a conversation and they were texting back and forth. And my kid literally could not participate in the social interactions with the other students in school without a cell phone. And I, I was like, this is insane. I'm actually making my child less able to integrate into friends at a brand new school she's just started going to because she doesn't have a cell phone. But part of the problem with the cell phones now is that we've all become hermits and we think we're extroverted because we're texting back and forth with hundreds of people or, or tens of people. I, I got to tell you, I hate holidays now, particularly the Hallmark holidays. You know, the Hallmark holidays are the BS holidays that you just got to go buy cards. I mean, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. I mean, God bless them. I love you moms. I love you dads. I love being a dad. I love my wife. I, I love Valentine's Day. But these are these are the, the BS holidays where you, you got to go buy stuff at the store and everybody feels obligated. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Father's Day. It's not the big holidays. I mean, Jesus Christ did not be bored or die and resurrect. I mean, and yet we got to celebrate it. Think of all the people sending all the rainbow texts this month for Pride Month. Every day, happy Pride Month. Oh, it's still Pride Month. Happy Pride Month again. Are you having a good Pride Month? It's a, it's a, it's a nonsensical holiday. 
that stretches out for a month and everybody's got a text and everybody does text. Nobody hangs out in person anymore. All of the extroverts have even isolated themselves. Their friend group is their Facebook group. And guess what? Their Facebook group looks and thinks exactly like them. It has allowed this technology to form a level of tribalism where we get to pick our friend groups based on our political views. We don't have to love our neighbor anymore. We don't even know our neighbor because we're staring at our phone. We don't have to know the guy in the apartment next door. We don't have to know the family across the street from us because we've got a phone. We've got an entire community of people who will never come check on us when we're sick because they're across the country. They'll never come water our plants or check on our animals when we're out of town because they're across the country. But they're our friend network on our phone. We've isolated ourselves from the tactile human world of our neighbor next door. We can escape dealing with the problems of our local community by escaping into our phone. It has isolated us as a people. It has broken down the human ability to interact with people of differing backgrounds and differing minds and differing ideas and allowed us a homogenous world of our own creation. It is not the world the Lord intended, but it's the one we have made for ourselves. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-973. 7425, should you wish to be a part of this year's program. Real quick, I want to play this audio from Congresswoman Jayapal, member of the squad. But that's why it's also important for us to tell these stories, because one in four women across America has had an abortion. 60% of pregnant people who have abortions are already mothers. And so it is, it is real. It is not going to stop, Jake. Abortions are not going to stop. What is going to happen is they're going to become illegal, they're going to become unsafe, and people will die. Young girls will die, mothers will die, women, pregnant people will die, and it it, it is it is but it's not gonna stop because this is the way our reproductive systems work, and we also have roles beyond just being reproducers. We have roles in the economy. Uh, I I would just I I really, really, really want to just note how she switched back and forth between pregnant people and women as if they were two different things. This is what I was talking about yesterday, the new lexicon of the the religious identification of the left now with the secular religion, uh, where it's just it's switching back and forth rapidly, quickly between um, pregnant people and women. At least they've ditched birthing people which was just insulting, but it's just, it, it, it stuck out to me. I wanted to, I wanted you to hear that clip, but I, I got to move on to other stuff, uh, including this. This is David Axelrod on scene. Now this clip happened a little while ago, so I haven't had time to get Charlie and Philip to clean it up for me since I'm on air. So I'm just going to play it here. So you'll hear a little extraneous conversation, but this is David Axelrod. He's talking about uh, Joe Biden in uh, Europe at the NATO conference, Joe Biden blasted the Supreme Court from Europe, something you're not supposed to remember when Trump did stuff like that. The media went nuts. Joe Biden attacks the Supreme Court, an American constitutional institution, and they're totally fine with it. But just listen to David Axelrod here. He wanted to show that he's a leader. He wanted to show strength and the ability to move events because there are so many things going on uh, in our domestic politics that are uh, seemingly beyond his ability to command events. The problem he has is, well, I think Americans are very, very sympathetic and supportive uh, of Ukraine, and Putin is for sure a, a, a great foe and villain uh, to, uh, to confront. Uh, these aren't, Ukraine is not the kitchen table issue that people are talking about. Uh, now, abortion rights are part of that discussion, certainly inflation day to day. And these are the issues that Americans are looking for action on. And, and you could see when the president got into those questions, gas prices and inflation and abortion rights, there was a lot less of that certainty, a lot less of that emphatic nature uh, of his initial presentation on NATO because he doesn't have great answers doesn't have great answers. He doesn't. It's part of the problem. The environment for the Democrats right now is terrible. Uh, The AP NORC poll has dropped. An overwhelming and growing majority of Americans say the U.S. is headed in the wrong direction, including nearly 
eight in 10 Democrats. According to a new poll that finds deep pessimism about the economy plaguing President Biden, 85% of adults say the country is on the wrong track. 79% describe the economy as poor. The findings suggest Biden faces fundamental challenges as he tries to motivate voters to cast ballots for Democrats. Inflation has consistently eclipsed the healthy 3.6% employment rate as a focal point for Americans who are dealing with high gas and food. Even among Democrats, 67% call economic conditions poor. He's doing the best he can. I can't say he's doing a good job, says Chuck McLean, 74. But his opposition is so bad, I just don't feel the Democratic Congress is doing enough. The Las Vegas resident is a loyal Democrat who says he doesn't miss an election. But he said the price of gas and groceries, Russia's war in Ukraine, and the country's deep political divide have led Americans to feel as though Washington is unresponsive. The poll shows only 39% of Americans approve of Biden's leadership overall. 60% disapprove. Interestingly, this is higher than Rasmussen's disapproval rating. His approval rating fell to its lowest point of his presidency last month and remains at that level. The Democratic president gets hit even harder on the economy with 69% saying they disapprove of him on that issue. Among Democrats, 43% disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy. Just 14% say things are going in the right direction. Through the first half of 2021, about half of Americans said the country was headed in the right direction, a number that has steadily eroded. Dorothy Vaudo, 66, said she voted for Biden in 2020 but plans to switch allegiance this year. I'm a Democrat, so I had to vote Democrat, but that's going to change, says the Martin County, North Carolina resident. In recent weeks, Americans have endured even more bad economic news, with inflation continuing to rise, interest rates increasing dramatically, the S&P 500 entering a bear market, and many serious economists predicting a recession, yet consumer spending has kept pace and hiring remains brisk. This is bad for the Democrats. This is bad. There's a growing concern about a recession. They're growing fears of economic calamity. Joe Biden's disapproval now is higher than his approval ever was. It's just remarkable how bad things actually are. And you can take out you can take out the uh, the real clear politics polling average polling. You, you can take all of that out. And you can just look at the 538 one. The, the 538 one is the one the media loves. And it's just not good. It's just bad for the Democrats. It's bad for Biden. It's bad. And the Democrats go into an election cycle with this. The headwinds against them the winds at the Republicans' back. And so you know what the Democrats are doing? And this is the thing that boggles my mind. For a year now, the Democrats have told us MAGA is bad. The Democrats have told us Trump's supporting candidates, election deniers are extremists. They must be stopped. 50. 50 million. Do you know what that 50 million is? 50 million. Those are the dollars Democrats have spent promoting MAGA candidates around the country. The Democrats have spent $50 million promoting election deniers, trying to get them the nomination for the GOP. The Democrats have spent $50 million trying to ensure that the Republicans they say are the biggest threat to democracy get the Republican nominations in states around the country, including Illinois and Colorado and Pennsylvania and Arizona. Because they're such big existential threats to democracy, Democrats have spent $50 million trying to help them. Why? The Democrats really think that they can beat these people in November. Joe Biden is at the worst popularity rating of any president in the midterm since Jimmy Carter. Remember in 1980, the accidental senators, six people got elected to the Senate who should not have gotten elected 
who no one thought could get elected, but Reagan's coattails were so big and Carter was so unpopular they got elected. These Democrats just spent $50 million. You know that they spent a million dollars on Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania. Mastriano is now tied in Pennsylvania for the governor's race there. Dr. Oz is still behind. The Democrats are doing a better job picking MAGA candidates than Donald Trump did. And the MAGA candidates could win. And the Democrats think that they're such a threat to democracy, they're helping them get elected. Maybe that maybe it's all just rhetoric. Maybe they don't really believe it. That could be. Maybe they don't believe it. That could be. And if so, well, they're going to learn a lesson, but it's going to be too late because they'll have put these people in positions of power around the country. And that's striking. Really is remarkable. They'll get exactly what they deserve. Now, I want to take a phone call here. Kevin, waiting patiently with a question. Kevin, welcome to the program. How are you? Hey, Eric. Uh, great. Listen a lot. Caller. So here, I liked uh, your uh, what you had to say about the unintended consequences, negative unintended consequences of uh, the, the iPhone technology, the smartphones. And uh, I'm curious whether you've had any opportunity to think about what may be negative unintended consequences of the Supreme Court Virginia and the EPA and how that ripples across other agencies. And, you know, what what might those be? Uh, OK, so will could there be negative consequences? Yeah, there, there could be inaction by regulatory agencies. Uh, they move slower. Uh, when sometimes they're designed to move fast to address consequences, there could be way more lawsuits, some of them frivolous, uh, that bog down the courts in dealing with this. But ultimately, uh, I actually think that all of the negative consequences wind up to some degree being good because they force Congress to have to act. They force Congress to have to do the job. The thing that I am most disturbed yeah, about, Kevin, is in the media today – the number of people who are saying that, oh, my gosh, um, this means nobody can act. We know Congress isn't going to act, and now this means no one can can do anything about climate change. Well, the point of the whole Constitution is that we have three separate branches of government with separate powers, and the legislative power is in the one branch that's not going to act. And maybe it's finally a good civics lesson for people that the Constitution still matters. Amen. So, yeah, look, I, I just I, I get the question and, and I, I understand that people may look at this negatively. The Democrats are in absolute meltdown right now. They are absolutely melting down. Chuck Schumer has condemned the Supreme Court's decision. So the Supreme Court literally says, Congress, this is your job. And the leader of the Senate says, oh, my gosh, this is such a terrible decision. We might actually have to work together on something. How much easier it would be. If the Supreme Court just said, hey, guys, don't worry, we'll let the executive do everything. You guys are just figureheads now. I mean, the Supreme Court is literally saying we don't have the power to do this and neither does the president. Only Congress has the power to do it. The Supreme Court seems to be the last entity in America that actually has a vested interest in the separation of powers and making sure each branch of government does the job it's designed to do. It's positively staggering to watch the meltdown at CNN and even from the dissent's opinion at the Supreme Court that, oh, my gosh, uh, nothing may get done because Congress won't act. Well, yes, that's exactly it. The founders designed it to be extremely difficult for anything to get done in this country unless it was urgent and there was consensus. Everything else is left for the states. So you know what? Watch the states step up and pass climate change regulations. California certainly will. And let's see what happens. You'll see a big shifting of the economy, and that's perfectly fine. It's the way the founders designed it. If you don't like it, amend the freaking Constitution. It's not that hard. Well, actually, it's very hard, but that also is the point. It's difficult to get things done at the federal level by design. Now, what, I, you know, I, honestly, if you are a customer of Patriot Mobile, if you're a customer, you should be patting yourself on the back because Patriot Mobile funded all the causes that won in the Supreme Court. The way they do it is they take their profits 
and they dedicated a portion to the conservative movement. So to the Second Amendment cause and the pro-life cause, the conservative movement generally, Patriot Mobile helps fund those causes. What a great concept. What a great idea. There are a group of Christian conservatives who decided to do a, an MVNO. That's a mob, uh, what is it? mobile virtual network operator. They take the other company's cell phone towers. Congress allows them to use the other company's cell phone towers. And then you get cell phone service from them. So you're not having to worry about those big woke companies. You're working with a Christian conservative company. And then they take a portion of their profits and give it to the conservative movement. And with my name, you get free activation with Patriot Mobile. And don't worry, like I said, they use the other company's tower, so you still get 5G data voice, all of that. So what you do is you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K, or you call them. They have 100% U.S.-based customer service, 972-PATRIOT. You'll be talking to someone in the United States, not Mumbai. 972-PATRIOT, tell them I sent you, you get free activation, or go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric today. Oh, hey, you know what? I rearranged all the sound on my computer and just freaked us all out in studio when I tried to press the little button to make you, not us, hear this. Well, um, ah, we're at the halfway point for the year, folks. We're at the halfway point for the year. It's June 30th, and the Dow is presently down 306.9 points, the S&P down 34.8 NASDAQ down 141.6, Russell 2000 down 8, the S&P 500 is on track for its worst half year in at least 30 years. Wow. Also, um, it's looking more and more like we may find out that the second quarter also economic output declined. If so, that means we're in a recession because it'll be two quarters in a row of negative economic growth, which means we're already in the recession. Uh, if that becomes official with the economic news that may be out tomorrow, well, then uh, that's going to be bad. Um, also, the Fed's preferred inflation measure rose 4.7% in May, Another multi-decade high. The core personal consumption expenditures prices, excluding food and energy, rose 4.7% from a year ago, slightly less than expected. Headline inflation remains strong, rising six-tenths of a percent of the month and holding near the highest level since 1982. Disposable income and inflation-adjusted spending both declined. Weekly jobless claims totaling $231,000 was a slight decline from the previous period. The markets are reacting to the news, and it's just bad. It's just bad. Personal savings edged higher, which suggests people think we're headed into rough economic times. And again, uh, whether you look at the 538 average or the nuclear top politics polling average, Joe Biden is at a record low approval rating. Uh, fewer people like Joe Biden than ever uh, with Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump did better than Joe Biden headed into the midterms of 2018, and he still had a brutal, brutal election for the GOP. Joe Biden is going to have a brutal, brutal danger. Danger, danger, danger for the Democrats come November. Will he last four years? I mean, you know, right now, the question uh, presented right now in the press is, does Joe Biden run for another term? I think if the election goes as badly as it's looking like it's going to go for the Democrats, the question is going to have to be, does he last a full term? Remember, in 2006, George W. Bush fired Don Rumsfeld the day after the election. It had to happen. Rumsfeld wanted to go anyway. He didn't want to be there for congressional hearings when the Democrats took over in 2007. But Bush fired him. Ron Klain is going to step aside. After the election. But who could Joe Biden fire other than himself for all the problems? Maybe he hands it over to Kamala and says, over to you, Kamala. Give you two years. See if you can make things better. Except, I mean, the Fed is expecting a 2023 recession. If we're already in a recession, that means the Fed is expecting a second recession. We may not be in one. We'll find out when we get the economic numbers tomorrow. We'll be talking about it here for sure. Big economic numbers coming out tomorrow. I uh, want to focus on those. And also, 4th of July, 
coming up. So we'll focus on that tomorrow. The last of the Medal of Honor winners from World War II has passed away. No more Medal of Honor winners from World War II alive. We'll talk about all that stuff tomorrow. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.